glory to jesus glory to jesus god bless you all come on in welcome back to another video with your woman of god angela hunt i trust that you're all doing well before i get into the teaching segment i would like to extend a special congratulations to all my warriors who embarked on the three days fasting and prayer program for deliverance from witchcraft powers and evil altars you have successfully completed you have successfully crossed the finish line i know many of you were probably afflicted you probably had some challenges some problems some pains in your body here and there but you push past these afflictions because you were desperate for your deliverance from witchcraft powers and evil altars God is pleased with you all. God has heard your cry. He has accepted your fasting and he has answered your prayers. Glory be to God. So go forth now. Continue in a mode of thanksgiving and giving praises unto God. Today I am here to teach you some crucial things that happen after you are fasted and what you should be doing after you are fasted your battle or warfare is not completed after you fasted and pray in fact you are just halfway through the spiritual warfare throughout your days of fasting and prayer you were the one who launched an organized attack against your spiritual enemies you were the one who drew the battle line against your enemies and you waged a good warfare against them in this particular fasting that we just completed it was well organized and strategized by the holy spirit and we released a lot of missiles and fire in the camp of the enemy the enemy hates you even the more right now and they are not happy with you so the first thing to expect after you are fasted is counter attacks from the enemy the enemies who were affected by your fasting and prayers are going to launch a counter-attack against you. A counter-attack is an attack that is intended to stop or oppose an attack by an enemy. Your enemies are now planning and strategizing how to get back at you, how to find a loophole, an opening, an entrance to infiltrate your life. They are now examining your weaknesses and your strengths, your propensity to fall into various sins and temptations. No good enemy or opponent is going to sit back and allow you to go scotch-free after you just created havoc, confusion, and destruction in your camp or kingdom. No good enemy is going to sit back and allow those who they have kept captive for so long to escape so easily let us reflect on pharaoh and the israelites in the book of exodus pharaoh and his army pursued the israelites with all their might when they realized that the israelites were escaping from years of captivity so we have some stubborn enemies like pharaoh who refused to let us go so they are now planning a counter attack hallelujah praise god i'm now gonna expose some ways in which they can carry out these counter attacks and number one on the list is dream attacks you might start to get some bad dreams where the enemy is attacking you these dreams are designed to instill fear in you and to let you believe that your fasting did not work these dreams are also sent to reinstate evil covenants through your fasting and prayer, many evil covenants and curses were broken. The enemy is now seeking ways to form back evil covenants so that you can stay under their curse and satanic captivity. For those of you who have been following me for some time, there are two videos here on the channel that you can use to pray and cancel bad dreams as soon as you wake up from them. The number two counter-attack strategy is temptations and sins. Beware of the tempter. Beware of the adversary, the devil. 
The enemy has studied you very well and they know all your weaknesses. They know those who are angered easily. They know those who are easily distracted. They know those who will fall into sexual sins very easily. They know those who love to gossip. They know those Christians whose prior lives are very weak and so forth and so on. So the enemy is going to devise various temptations around you for you to fall into sin so that you can open the door legally for them to enter and attack and re-enter your vessel during this time after you have fasted we need to be very discerning and we need to pray so that we do not fall into temptations james 4 verse 7 says submit yourselves therefore to god resist the devil and he will flee from you matthew 6 verse 13 this is a part of the lord's prayer it says and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil evil so the enemy is gonna want to come with various temptations and sins for you to fall into the trap of sins so that you can open the door for them to infiltrate your life during this time the enemy will rise up those around you to aggravate you to annoy you to grieve you this could be your spouse your children your neighbor your co-worker etc your enemy is trying to find a way in the enemy wants to come back to kill steal and destroy from you whatsoever you have received from this fasting the gifts the anointing the deliverance the healing the restoration the enemy of john 10 10 wants to come back to kill steal and destroy from you hallelujah those demons that were kicked out during this fasting and prayer program they want to come back to that vessel so after you are fasted, you need to be very sober and vigilant to the devices of the enemy so that you will not fall into the trap of temptations and sins. The number three counter attack strategy is mind attacks the battlefield of the mind the enemy is going to attack your mind with many different negative thoughts and imaginations he's going to tell you that your fasting did not work see the attacks are still coming he's going to try to instill evil seeds of doubt and worry and fear in your minds the enemy wants you to believe that you are not free and that god did not answer your prayer the enemy wants you to go back on the promises of God. Through these mind attacks, the enemy wants you to eventually speak out what he is planting in your minds. He wants you to speak out those negative thoughts to cancel out your fasting and prior efforts. He wants you to speak death and destruction over your life. After you are fasted, stand firmly on the promises of God written in his word and speak only what God says about you. Proverbs 18 verse 21 tells us clearly that death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Therefore, after you are fasted, speak life only. Speak it is written only. Even if that which you are fasted for for has not yet manifested still keep calling in the promises of God over your life rebuke and silence those evil thoughts and evil voices immediately and do not let them take roots in your heart glory be to God second Corinthians 10 verse 5 says casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of God so as the enemies come in with these evil thoughts and the evil voices we need to rebuke them we need to shut them up right away we need to silence them and stand firmly on the promises of God remember Luke 6 verse 45 tells us that out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks
speak it. So after we are fasted, we have to be mindful that the enemy is going to come with mind attacks. And these mind attacks can cause different things to come from our hearts. So we have to guard our hearts. Whatsoever we speak comes from our heart. So we cannot allow these evil voices and these negative thoughts that the enemy is planting in our minds to get to our hearts because we will speak what will come from our heart glory be to god hallelujah those are the three dominant counter-attack strategy that the enemy uses against believers after they have successfully completed a fasting and prayer program hallelujah hallelujah glory to jesus glory to jesus let's now look at the five things that you should do after fasting my brother my sister in christ after you are fasted you still have spiritual work to do and you have to be prepared for what the enemy is planning you have to stay on the battlefield now the first thing that you should do after you have fasted is thanksgiving and worship after you have fasted please stay in thanksgiving and worship mode thank God for what he has done for you thank God for what he's about to do for you let your praises rise daily through adoration singing and dancing unto God the more you thank and worship God is the more the blessings will come down your worship will open the heavens over your life also while thanking and worshiping God you are releasing more of your faith about what you fasted for Psalms 9 verse 1 I will praise thee O Lord with my whole heart I will show forth all thy marvelous works so after you have fasted be grateful start giving God thanks because he has heard you he has answered you this life is spiritual it is just a matter of time before things will start to manifest in the physical the number two thing on the list to do after you have fasted is to keep standing on the word of God this is not the time to slack off on your studies and meditation of the scriptures you will need the word of God in your heart to rebuke and resist the enemy and keep your faith lifted in Matthew 4, Jesus rebuked and silenced the devil several times with the word of God. Jesus kept quoting, it is written, it is written, it is written. Let your faith stand strong after fasting. Do not go back on the promises of God. Keep declaring the word of God over your life. Keep speaking only what you want. Do not let negativity come from you your mouth do not cancel out your fasting and prior efforts by speaking negatively many of you probably saying i have fasted uh, and i've not seen anything happening yet i don't have any testimony yet it seemed god didn't hear me it seemed god didn't answer my prayer let none of those negativity come from your mouth the number three thing to do after you have fasted is to remain very prayerful Many Christians ignorantly make the mistake by slowing down or stopping their prayers. They say they have prayed so much over the fasting days that they can take a break now. I said this ought not to be so. In fact, you should be fortifying yourselves more with prayers to keep your defense walls up so that you can ward off the counter attacks of the enemy. In fact, the Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 17 to pray without ceasing luke 18 verse 1 tells us that men ought always to pray and not faint so not because you have just successfully completed a fasting and prayer program means you should take a break no you should be fortifying yourself you should be allowing the fire on your altar to continue blazing so that you can withstand the counter attacks when they come satanic agents know that many christians often retreat to their old prayerless ways after fasting and prayer so they will back off and they will wait until you have gone back to your prayerless ways to, to attack you 
they will wait until the fire of your altar has gone down to attack you so keep a momentum of prayer going throughout the day even after you are fasted pray very well in the morning to command your day to line up with the plans and purposes of God pray very well in the morning to cancel any evil thing that is programmed into your day you also need to pray very well before you go to bed cover yourself cover your family cover your possessions and if possible throw in some midnight prayers here and there keep your fire altar burning the number four thing to do after you have fasted and pray is to anoint yourself and your home as a precautionary and defense measure it is good to draw the bloodline of protection around yourself your family your home and your possessions you can proceed to anoint yourself and your loved ones a few days after fasting with anointing oil you can also anoint your homes your vehicles your business places etc with the anointing oil which is the blood of jesus if you don't have anointing oil you can tap into the anointing water priors i have here on the channel then you can sprinkle and spray the anointing water everywhere you need to anointing water priors can also be used to bless your olive oils so as a precautionary and defensive strategy we can anoint ourselves and everything that concerns us with the blood of Jesus we are drawing the bloodline of protection around ourselves and everything that concerns us the number five thing to do after you have fasted and pray is to testify and give God the glory revelation 12 verse 11 and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they love not their lives unto death so when the testimonies start to roll in you need to testify and give God the glory you need to testify and give God the win the win is for God the win is not for you one of the ways we overcome the devil is by the word of our testimony. The glory does not belong to you and God does not share his glory with no other. Isaiah 42 verse 8. I am the Lord that is my name and my glory will I not give to another. Neither my praise to graven images. So God wants his glory. The win belongs to God. It is not yours. The blessing is yours, but the glory is not yours. Hallelujah. So those are the five main things that you should be doing after you have successfully completed a fasting and prayer program. Do not fall into the snares and traps of the enemy by letting your guards down, by letting your defense wall down no good enemy is gonna allow you to come and fire missiles and bombs and bullets and fire in your camp and they do not counter attack glory be to god so we need to keep doing these things even after we have fasted yes we're gonna celebrate and give god thanks but we still have to stay on the watch tower glory to jesus glory to jesus before i close out this teaching i would like to share with you a powerful story from the bible to drive my point home that after we have attacked the enemy we need to stay sober and vigilant we need to stay prayerful and watchful we need to stay on the watch tower in samuel 30 and we know this story very well this is the story of where david asked god to pursue overtake and recover all god told him yes you can go ahead pursue overtake and you will indeed recover all what happened in this story is that the amalekites they raided ziglag and they burnt it down they took away all the women and children and everyone and all their livestock and so on and they took them as captive and took them away 
in verse 8 of the text david inquired of the lord if he should pursue overtake and recover all god told him yes he should go ahead because he shall surely recover all david gathered his troops together and they started to search they started to pursue the amalekites in verse 16 of the text david and his troops finally got to where the amalekites were camping out they were scattered over the countryside but they were busy eating and drinking and partying because of the great success they had because of the great capture that they had from the philistines and from judea so these Amalekites who raided David's camp, Ziglag and burn it down, they were partying, they were celebrating, they had no one on the watchtower. No one thought what if David and his army comes to pursue us, they were busy celebrating. In verse 17 of the text, it says that David fought them from dusk until evening of the next day. None of them got away except 400 young men who rode off on camels and fled verse 18 says that david recovered everything the amalekites have taken including his two wives now the amalekites were very reckless you attacked a camp you plundered them you took their stuff and you're busy celebrating you didn't have anybody on the watchtower you had your defense walls down nobody was looking out to see if the enemy is coming with a counter attack and david and his army did come with a counter attack and they did recover all why am i sharing this story because we just completed a fasting and prayer program where we attacked the enemy and we took back our stuff no, we have to be watchful and vigilant and keep our defense walls up by continuing in prayer and worshiping and studying the Bible so that the enemy will not come with a counter attack to infiltrate us and take back everything from us. So we have to guard that which we have received from this fasting and prayer. Some of us got healing. We got deliverance. Open doors are on the way. Blessings and testimonies are on the way. Glory be to God. Many of us were released from captivity, satanic cages and prisons. So the enemy is coming back. Glory be to God. Because the Bible tells us that the enemy comes but to kill, steal and destroy. So they are coming back with a vendetta. They are coming back with a counter attack. But I just want to forewarn you all to stay on the watchtower. Stay in a prayer mode. Stay in a worship mode. Stay in a thanksgiving mode. Continue to be sober and vigilant. So that the enemy will not come and take back what you have already recovered. Remember you did operation recover all. You have already recovered it all in Jesus name. Family I trust that you have been blessed by this little teaching you can use the tips from this little teaching even after you do your own personal fasting and prayer stay on the watchtower watch and pray until next time see you in the next video be blessed